What's up Giants fans? It's your boy No Name coming back at y'all with another Giants video. This episode we're going to be talking about a little quick recap about how the Giants closed off their mandatory mini camp and I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit on a topic that's been irking me for a while. People saying that the Giants are going to be a failure and that how we're not going to do good. We're going to go like a 3 and 13 again or something like that, you know? So I just want to address two topics in one video. Kind of the reason uh, I'm putting this out on Sunday too rather than I think I originally said I was gonna put it out on Friday or Saturday because the last minicamp practice was on Thursday but that being said let's get right into it so the Giants final mandatory minicamp took place on Thursday June 6th and it was a really back and forth type of practice both the offense and the defense or should I say the G fence they showed up a lot. Shout a big shout out to Q Dog Six Two Six. He's a subscriber of mine, a viewer that's been commenting on a lot of my videos, showing his great support. He coined the term G Fence, at least to my knowledge, in the comments below. You know what I'm saying? I read y'all comments. I try to get to everybody. I try to respond when I can. If I don't, you know, I try to leave a little like and a little heart. But shout out to Q Dog. Thank you for the support. Thank you all for the support. He coined the term G-Fence. I told him, I promised him, I'm going to start calling the defense G-Fence now. So we had the G-Fence and the NYPD, which is actually, um, I think it was Jenkins or another defensive back that nicknamed the defensive back room, the NYPD. And they just might be that this year. But the, the Giants offense and defense really showed out. They came out to play today and it was very high spirit. It was very high energy, much like the OTAs, much like the uh the other mini camp practices but the reason this is a good thing and the reason i'm bringing it up is because we haven't had this type of camaraderie this type of brotherhood in the giants locker room in a long time i mean the closest thing we had to it to my knowledge would be when snacks and will hernandez got into it a little bit last year and we all thought from the outside that um they were just being i don't know a little rough with each other maybe there was just a bit of rough housing some trash off and whatnot but from everybody else, the uh, the other teammates that were there, they all said that it was a real fight, that it was something with malice, you know, with mal intent rather than something trying to hype each other up. And that's what we have now. You see the effects of Dave Gettleman in this team now a lot. Everybody's trying to keep each other motivated. They're trying to push each other to do their best. Yeah, they trash talk, but there's a difference between when you're like uh, talking just to talk, you know, to get to get the person opposite of you, to get your teammates to play to their highest ability. You know what I'm saying? To simulate a real NFL environment and a difference when you're talking to like, to, to cut into somebody, you know, to hurt their feelings or whatnot, to show them that like, you know, you don't like them or something like that. But it's a great show of the locker room makeover that Gellman has been talking about, that the management has been talking about in general. It's really kept these practices lively and it's kept them high energy and everybody's going out there and, you know, performing their best. Yes, it's without pads, but the energy and just just the air around them, the electricity that they're creating almost makes up for the lack of pads. It's like a real NFL game out there for these guys and I love to see it because everybody's there. Everybody wants to get better. Everybody wants this team to do good. And it all starts with each player doing their best and that's what's happening. So I just love to see that, you know? So let me get back to like what type of drills they were doing. The main one they were running today was some red zone drills. And by the way, this was the shortest out of all the uh, mandatory mini camps that the Giants held. So, you know, a lot uh, less practice than usual that they had. They're trying to rest them up. So when they come back Monday for OTAs, everybody's well rested. Everybody got what they need to come back. But one of the main things they did was a uh, red zone drill. And we saw a battle between Sterling Shepard and Janoris Jenkins. Our, both of our number ones on both sides of the ball. Shepard, everybody expects him to step up this year. Jenkins, everybody expects him to go back to what he was in 2016, lockdown corner, somebody they could rely on. And I, I believe both of them could do it. We've seen Shepard take over when Beckham has been out the past two years. We've seen him do well, and he plays the slot, which uh, gives him a little bit of an edge. Uh, one of the easiest positions to play in football would be slot receiver. The ball comes to you a lot more. So yeah, we, they, we had them duking out. And actually, Jenkins won the battle twice. Uh, Eli tried to get the ball down to Shepard, but Jenkins got his hands on it both times. The first pass, it was a little bit too close to the sideline, and Janoris made Shepard have to catch it out of bounds. And then the second pass, he simply knocked it away. You know what I'm saying? They, they were really fighting for it. Uh, Shepard did catch some passes you know, in and out, but not really any of them went in for the goal, which was a touchdown since they were running red zone drills. This is sort of a battle that uh, I expected to hear more of coming up this year because these are two guys that have been 
under the radar both on the team and on the NFL in general I've already said y'all know how I feel about Jenkins I think he's still a top 10 corner I believe he just needs to show it he needs to go out there put it all out on the table and Shepard I believe was the most underrated slot receiver in the league and now he's gonna shine more I mean depending how they spread it between him and Tate and him and the rest of the receivers but Shepard's definitely gonna shine more now so it's I love to see that you know they're trying to fight each other a little bit better each other iron sharpens iron guys next up with the second team now Daniel Jones the guy who we've only been hearing good things from has been performing well he did it again uh, on Thursday he had the first two throws he had were two touchdowns first one to Cody Latimer second one to Benny Fowler so Jones in general has been improving a lot in like a little over a month's time that he's been there and we've heard this from other players um, forgive me, I can't remember the specific player's name, but it was on the defense. I want to say Dribble Peppers, but um, it might even be Golden Tate. Yeah, actually, I think it was Golden Tate in an interview. But everybody said the same thing when asking about Jan Daniel Jones. How is he? Is he good? What's his improvement like? Everybody says this guy's improvement, his learning curve is like through the roof. From compared to when he was a month ago to now, he's probably already NFL ready. Like that's the impression that his teammates are giving off. Uh, Golden State actually looked like he had to hold back a little excitement when he was talking about Daniel Jones. I mean, it seems to me, it seems to me that he's been improving at an exponential rate. He's already performing extremely well with the second team guys. I mean, I don't really expect him to have practice with the first team guys that much, but I'm more than sure that he's right for it. I'm just so happy to see that Daniel Jones is out here trying to prove people wrong. He's out here showing that he was worth the pick that. Maybe he is the best quarterback in the draft. He's just basically out here to prove everybody wrong and to play football, play good football, you know? I love the guy off the field, and from what I'm hearing on the field, I like it, man. I like it a lot. So, so nice to see that uh, he's spreading the ball, not just focusing on one receiver, and he did it with two different types of passes. One of them was a screen, and the other was a, a rip route, whip route. Now, he did have an interception today, but it was a tip pass off of Shepard's hands. It went into um, a defensive back, Kenny Ladd. Kenny Ladler, I'm assuming that's definitely an undrafted free agent, but yeah, for the most part, Jones been doing good. And one last thing I really want to talk about regarding this mini camp was uh, uh, Saquon Barkley and his leadership. I spoke about it uh, in my last couple of videos. Saquon in general has really stepped up into his role. He's really shown that, yo, he's the guy. He's out here trying to lead the Giants. And one of the best examples was today. He became really vocal, and he's not usually a vocal guy, but he's trying to step into that role, so he has to be. It was during the last play of practice. Um, the teams were going against each other between offense and defense. Uh, it was the third team, so that would be like Kyle Oletta and the boys that were going against each other to decide who would do push-ups, the offense or the defense. Now, the defense, initially, they got the stop. But there was a penalty, so technically the offense won. And that was it, right? The defense was supposed to go do push-ups. But Saquon came out and started chanting, one more play. One more play. Eventually, the entire crowd started chanting it. The team started chanting it. One more play. Shermer, he was like, yeah, why not? The team is into it. Like, they love the game. Why not? Let's do one more play. They ran again. Offense still came away with the win, so defense had to do push-ups. But I love to see that he's stepping into his role, and he has this effect on guys. He has this influence on guys that he could lead them. They'll listen to him. They'll follow with his advice and all that. And even the energy within that shows to what I was talking earlier with Gelman in the locker room. The fact that the team is, they don't want to stop playing. They want to stay out on the field. They want to improve. They just want to do football, you know? That's what that showed me, and I, I like to see that. So that, 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 that kind of wraps it up for uh, my thoughts on and recap on the mandatory minicamp day three, which was the final day. In terms of the minicamp, let me know what you all think. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Now I'm kind of going to shift gears towards the... Uh, the topic that's been irking me a little bit. I'm gonna try and keep it short, you know, spend maybe at most five minutes on this so we don't have like a long video, but everywhere you go, everybody's saying the Giants are gonna be terrible, they're gonna be bad. I spoke about this a little. I said, yeah, let them doubt us. Let them doubt us, you know? We do well when we're doubted. We do well when we're the underdogs. But is that still, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm not bothered by it. I am bothered by it. I just wanna speak really quickly, like, how do you think we're gonna go say within the range from three and thirteen to six and ten again. I really think we're at least, at the very least, a seven-win team, unless something terrible happens, like a slew of injuries and you know just guys going left, you know going out left and right, which obviously I pray that doesn't happen. I don't see how we fall below seven wins. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a completely different team from last year. We did the most we could with remake rebuilding the offensive line. 
And re with rebuilding the offensive line, not only do you give Saquon better time to get out the backfield, Saquon better running lanes. Now that Saquon has better running lanes, it makes up for, you know, the fact that we don't have anybody really to take the top off, like Odell, but I think that's going to be replaced by the midpoint of the season. We're going to have one receiver that steps up that replaces it. And now we don't have Saquon dodging, dodging, dodging like nine tackles in the backfield, and he could actually get positive yardage all, all the time. And then that now actually does what he was supposed to do last year. It frees up the pass a lot more, and it gives Eli a little bit more time in the pocket to scan and find his receivers. That's on the offensive side. And now we have two amazing possessing receivers that are great with yards after catching Golden Tate and Shepard. And on the defense, I think we have one of the best secondaries in the league, at the very least one of the best young secondaries in the league. At worst, I think we're going to be ranked somewhere around 19th or 20th out of all the teams, and that's good enough. You know what I'm saying? If we have a top 15 offense and a 19th or 20th defense, we're going like that 8-8, eight 9-6, and 9-7 eight, nine and, six, uh, nine and seven route. And who knows if we make the playoffs, you know? Like, I just don't see where people are coming from with this. Yes, our pass rush, it took a hit. But uh, I think Zimenez or... Marcus Golden could fill in that role. They're both combined. They could fill in the role of what Olivia Vernon provided, which was like around seven sacks a year. I'm pretty sure we could get those out of that guy. I mean, get that out of those guys. You know, linebacker group, still something to be wanted. I still want a better middle linebacker alongside Alec Ogletree. But I just don't see how people could say that um, this team is going to be that bad next year. And we have probably the best special teams in the entire league. Algic Rosas, hands down, the best kicker in the league and we had an amazing punt return and kick return game last year in the second half of the season so we got like a top five special teams and for those of you that say that doesn't really matter yes it does look at the chicago bears versus philadelphia eagles game that game was decided by the special teams you know i'm saying that's all i wanted to say on this topic because i don't really want to spend too much time on it it's a bit of a petty topic but that's all i really want to say you know i know most of y'all would agree with me there's some of y'all that won't but either way leave your thoughts down below that's it for today you're...